Okay, let's open our Bibles uh, in the book of Nehemiah, chapter 7, this evening. Nehemiah, chapter 7. Let's start with the first four verses. Now it came to pass, when the wall was built, and I had set up the doors, and the porters, and the singers, and the Levites were appointed, that I gave my brother Hanani and Hananiah, the ruler of the palace, charge over Jerusalem. For he was a faithful man, um, and feared God above many. And I said unto them, Let not the gates of Jerusalem be opened until the sun be hot. And while they stand by, let them shut the doors and bar them, um, excuse me, and appoint watchers of the inhabitants of Jerusalem, every one uh, in his watch, and every one to be over against his house. Now the city was large and great, but the people were few therein, and the houses were not builded. In verse 2, well, excuse me, verse 1 is self-explanatory, but in verse 2, Nehemiah delegates some authority to a younger brother, Hanani, um, as well as to Hananiah, the ruler of the palace. And the reason for this is because Nehemiah intends to go back to Persia to report. Look forward at chapter 13 for just a moment. Chapter 13 and uh, verses 5 and 6. And he had prepared for him a great chamber, where aforetime they laid the meat offering, and the frankincense, uh, and the vessels, and the tithes of the corn, the new wine, and the oil, which was commanded to be given to the Levites, and the singers, and the porters, and the officers of the priests. But in all this time was not I at Jerusalem. For in the two and thirtieth year of Artaxerxes, king of Babylon, came I unto the king, and after certain days obtained I leave of the king. So he's intending to go back, which we haven't got to that part of the book yet, um, to report back to the king of Persia, Artaxerxes. Um, verse 3, uh, once again. And I said unto them, Let not the gates of Jerusalem be opened until the sun be hot. And while they stand by, let them shut the doors and bar them, and appoint watchers of the inhabitants of Jerusalem, everyone in his watch, and everyone to be over against his house. Normally, the gates of the city were opened at sunrise. And we get that from the book of Judges, chapter 9, if you want to run back there. Judges 9. Judges 9, and begin there at verse 31. And he sent messengers unto um, Abimelech privily, saying, Behold, um, Gaal, the son of Eben, and his son, excuse me, excuse me, and his brethren be come to Shechem, and behold, they fortify the city against thee. Now therefore, up by night, thou and the people that is with thee, and lie in wait um, in the field. And it shall be that in the morning, as soon as the sun is up, thou shalt rise early, and set upon the city. And behold, when he, excuse me, <clears throat> when he and the people uh, that is with him come out against thee, uh, then mayest thou do to them as thou shalt find occasion. And uh, so here in verse 3, the keepers are told to wait until noon, or at least midday, mid-morning, um, until the sun be hot before opening the gates of Jerusalem. And, and at sundown, when they shut the doors and bar them, there are to be, there are to be still uh, have watchers keep an eye on the, uh, on the entrance, the openings in and out of the city. 
there was still an army of Palestinians, or Philistines, if you want to call them that, and all the others nearby. Uh, uh, and the Jewish people were greatly outnumbered. Verse 4 there said, Now the city was large and great, but the people were few therein, and the houses were not built. Verses 5 and 6. And my God put into mine heart to gather together the nobles and the rulers of the people, that they might be reckoned by genealogy. And I found a register of the genealogy of them, which came up at the first, uh, and found written therein, these are the children of the provinces, excuse me, of the province, that went up out of the captivity of those that had been carried away, whom Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had carried away, and came again to Jerusalem and to Judah, every one into his unto the city, unto his city. And we observed this earlier in Ezra chapter two, in verses one and two. Ezra's eventual census uh, didn't match the census of Nehemiah's in his time. Um, Ezra's census comes to a total came to a total of twenty nine thousand eight hundred eighteen people counted in his reckoning, uh, containing four hundred ninety four people who were not listed by Nehemiah. Nehemiah's total is 31,089 people, with 1,765 uh, not mentioned by Ezra in his book. And the increase in Nehemiah's list shows that many people came to Jerusalem from captivity um, as more than those who had registered their names with the officials with Nehemiah to come. Um, and since these lists are long and dry and boring, <laughs> but the Bible says all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. 2 Timothy 3.16 Let's do our best to plow through this evening. And um, and I thought about that, so I went down to the hall, down the hall, and got a larger print Bible for myself, so I can stumble over as few words as possible this evening. So forgive me for any mispronunciations on my part, but let's continue there. Start at verse, um, I guess it was seven or six. And I think we're at verse seven. Uh, who came with Zerubbabel, Jeshua, uh, Nehemiah, uh, Azariah, oh my gosh, <clears throat> Rehemiah, Nehemiah, Mordecai, Bilshan, uh, Mis Misparath, uh, Big Bigvati, Nehunim, I may have made a mistake, Nehemin, um, Beana, the number I say of the men of the people of Israel was this. Okay. Start at verse 8. The children of Parash, 2,172. The children of Shef, excuse me, Shephatiah, 370 and 2. The children of Era, 650 and 2. The children of Pehathiah, Pehathmoab, excuse me, of the children of Jeshua and Joab, 2,800. Uh, and 18. The children of Elam, 1,250 and 4. The children of Zatu, 840 and, two, and 5. The children of Zechari, excuse me, Zachari, 703 score. The children of Binuel, uh, 640 and 8. The children of Bibei, uh, 620 and 8. The children of uh, Asgad, 2,320 and 2. The children of Adonai come, 600, 3 score and 7. The children of uh, Bigvei, Big 2,000, 3 score and 700. A score, of course, is 20, 2,600 or 67. The children of Aden, 655. The children of Ater of Hezekiah, uh, 98. The children of 
Hashem, 328, the children of Bezai, excuse me, Bezai, 320 and 4, the children of Hareph, 120, the children of Gibeon, 90 and 5, the men of uh, Bethlehem and Nineveh, uh, and 104 score and 8, the men of Anathoth, and 120 and 8. <clears throat> This is now followed by a list of, um, let's see. Oh, I know what I wanted to mention uh, before I forget. Some of these names uh, are not names of people, they're names of cities. And that accounts for some of the discrepancy in the, the total counts between Ezra's list and Nehemiah's list. Let's continue there at verse 28. Uh, the men of Beth, uh, Beth Asma, Beth Asma, Beth, 40 and 2. The men of Kirjath Jerim, uh, Shepherah, and Beeroth, 740 and 3. The men of Ramoth and Geba, 620 and 1. The men of Michmas, uh, 120 and 2. The men of Bethel and, <coughs> excuse me, and Ain, uh, and 120 and 3, the men of the other Nebo, 50 and 2, the children of the other Elam, 1,250 and 4, the children of Harem, 320, the children of uh, Jericho, 340 and 5, the children of Lod, uh, Hadid, and Ono, 720 and 1, the uh, children of Senea, three hundred, excuse me, three thousand nine hundred and thirty. Get my notes back over here. <clears throat> Let's see, I don't want to miss anything here. Okay, continuing in verse thirty-nine. The priests, the children of Jedea, of the house of Jeshua, nine hundred seventy and three. Uh, the children of Immer, 1,050 and 2. The children of Asher, 1,240 and 7. The children of Harem, 1,017. Now the Levite priests are listed. Um, oh wait, we haven't got to them yet. Where are we? Verse 43. Right, verse 43. The Levites, the children of Jeshua, uh, of Cadmiel, and of the children of Hasdava, Hodava, excuse me, seven and four, seventy and four, the singers, the children of Asaph, and hundred forty and eight, the porters, the children of Shalom. Porter was a, a a grunt laborer, you might say. They are charged with carrying things, particularly heavy heavy objects. You see the word uh, Nethanim, and Nethanim was an assistant in the temple. Uh, porters, their job was specifically to carry heavy objects. Uh, much, not much, not unlike someone who was a porter many years ago handling someone else's luggage on a train or even an airline. And uh, let's go to verse 44. The singers, the children of uh, Asaph, and 148. The porters, the children of Shalom, the children of Ater, the children of Talman, the children of Akub, the children of uh, Hetia, Hetita, the children of Shoba, Shobai, and 130 and 8. Um, now we're getting, now we're getting, yeah, we started getting some of the Levites, starting at verse 43. And we're down to where I got to verse 45. Okay, let's just continue reading down down to about verse 62. Okay, let's bite off some more. <clears throat> verse 46. The Nephilims, the children of uh, Ziha, the children of Hashafa, Hashifa, the children of uh, Tabioth, the children of Keros, the children of Sia, uh, the children of Padon, the children of Lebanon, um, 
the children of Hagabah, the children of Shalmei, the children of Hanani, excuse me, Hanan, the children of Gidel, the children of Gehar, the children of uh, Rehah, the children of Rizim, the children of Nekodah, the children of Gazam, the children of Uzzah, the children of Pharsia, the children of Bessai, the children of uh, Mayanim, the children of Nephish, Nephishism. Um, I'm glad I, we didn't have children with those names. The children, <laughs> the children of um, Backbook, the children of Hakafa, the children of Herha, uh, excuse me, Harhur, the children of uh, Basleth, the children of uh, Mehida, the children of Harsha, the children of Barkas, the children of Sisera, the children of Tamar, Tema, excuse me, the children of Neziah, the children of Atapha, the children of Solomon's, excuse me, and okay, the children of Solomon's servants, the children of um, Sotei, the children of Sophereth, the children of Perida, the children of Jaila, the children of Darkon, the children of Gidel, the children of Shephatiah, the children of Hatil, the children of um, <laughs> Pokereth, the of, of uh, Zimeon, the children of Ammon, the Nethanims, and the children of Solomon's servants were three hundred and ninety and two. And And these were they which went up also from uh, Telmanoth, uh, Telharesh, uh, uh, Kirib, Adon, and Immer, but they could not show their father's house nor the seed, nor their seed, whether they were of Israel. The children of uh, Deliah, the children of Tobiah, the children of Nekodah, uh, 640 and 2. And uh, see, so we're down to verse 62. And uh, the word, let's see, let's read verses 62, 63 through 65. And of the priests, the children of Hebiah, the children of Koz, the children of Barzillai, which took one of the daughters of Barzillai, the uh, Gileadite wife, and was called after their name. These sought their register among those that were reckoned by genealogy, but it was not found. Therefore were they, as polluted, put from the priests, uh, priesthood. And the Tershatha said of them uh, that they should not eat of the most holy things, till there stood up a priest with Urim and Thummim. The word there, T-H-E-I-R, verse 63, uh, as was, uh, and was called after their name, is probably a reference to the children of mixed marriages between the Jews and others in the world. And uh, verse 65, the Tershatha, which is probably uh, Nehemiah himself, that was another name for the one who was the governor over all the affairs, judged that some of them could not serve as priests until they could show their proper genealogy, their proper lineage, is what you have to make of that. I don't... I'm going to... That's a lot of reading of difficult names. But... Uh, our priest, our high priest doesn't wear our special robes or vestments. We, our high priest is the Lord Jesus Christ himself. His, the sacrifice that he uh, performed was final. It was sufficient to cover the sins of all men and women everywhere for all time. And uh, we don't depend upon a, a priesthood to offer sacrifices for us or to, to go between us and God. The middle wall of partition, uh, or the, the veil separating the holy place from the most holy place in the temple, 
was ripped in twain uh, at the death of Christ, and and the the indication is that there there is no longer a separation between the sinner and the Savior and and God. Uh, by the death of the Lord Jesus Christ, he broke down that middle wall of partition, and now a person has direct access to the Heavenly Father. He doesn't depend upon someone as a mediator or go-between. Paul said in 1 Timothy 2.5, there is one God and one, uh, one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. If you have a church that teaches you pray to the Virgin Mary, and then she talks to Jesus on your behalf, and then Jesus takes your need to the Heavenly Father. That's two mediators between you and God. And add to that a whole growing list of Catholic saints, a saint for just about every element of life, every need, every occupation in life. Uh, and with, with the addition of every new saint, the absolute uh, uh, authority of Jesus Christ is diminished just a little bit more. The more the list of saints grows, the farther, low, the lower rather, the, the, the station, the stature of Jesus Christ becomes. He doesn't need anyone doing his job for him. It says, oh, God, Christ isn't capable of doing it all for the sinner. So he enlists an army of helpers because he's too busy doing these other things. He's too busy making sure Mormons have the right underwear on, right? He's too busy making sure JWs pronounce his name right. He's too busy with other things uh, to, to meet the needs of every sinner. So the Catholic Church has this growing list, this pantheon of saints, and really that's what it comes from. Greek mythology, a growing list of saints and deities, each one there to help. And Hinduism, there are multiple gods and goddesses, millions of them, uh, function in much the same way. They've just been at it longer than the Catholics have been at it, so they don't, the Catholics don't have nearly as many gods and goddesses as the Hindus have deities for every aspect of life. But you and I don't depend upon a, a, a priesthood any longer to offer sacrifices either at an altar of any kind. Uh, the altar that did the work for us was called the cross of Calvary. And the Lord Jesus Christ was not only the priest, but he was also the sacrifice at one time, uh, offering a perfect uh, offering for our benefit. I'm glad that I don't, our, our church, uh, the Christian church, the a body of believers doesn't depend upon things of that kind. And I've said this many times recently, we don't depend upon a certain clerical class with certain costume, a certain wardrobe, wearing particular haircuts or a tonsure like the old monks would wear. We don't depend upon the lighting of candles and burning of incense. We don't depend on counting our prayers on a string of beads or some knotted rope. We don't have to uh, contort our bodies to certain bows and postures to uh, show our submission to God. And um, the, the, the invitation for a sinner to turn to the Lord Jesus Christ and be born again is such a simple um, proposition. It's, in fact, it's so simple. That's why um, most of the world misses it. They imagine it's got to be, there's got to be something more to it than that. Only trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and what he can do for me, that's it? Well, that's about it. You know, God knows, uh, God sees the heart. He sees more than you and I can see. Um, the Bible says that the man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. And so man is always judging the spiritual level of another man by his outward gestures, his outward actions, uh, the posture of his body, the, the calmness the way in which he prays, or the way he folds his hands together, or, or does something that looks like it's pious and spiritual. But who knows what's going on inside the heart, inside the mind of that person. The Lord looks on the uh, heart. Man can only see the outward appearance. I worked with a guy several years ago, and he said, you know, you come to our church, doesn't matter what you how you're dressed or what you look like. He says, uh, we, don't, um, we don't care about the outward appearance. We see the heart. And I thought, you can do that? I don't know anyone else who can see my heart. 
I don't know anybody can see someone else's heart. I, I think I knew he was sincere, meaning we're not judgmental of whether someone's got a you know sweatshirt on or sports shirt on or he's got a, a dress suit on. It, the, the, those things are irrelevant uh, to the saving of the soul. Um, but I knew what he meant was sort of comical when he said it. We see the heart. I thought you can do that. I don't know anyone that can. But God sees the heart, and, he, and when someone says, Lord, I've got these problems, I don't know where to turn, or he's desperate, he's got bill collectors, you know, hounding him, he's got family matter, family problems, he's got a host of other problems at work, and maybe he just lost his job, he's afraid to go home and tell his family about it, he doesn't know what, what's going to happen, and it um, seems like everything's going wrong for him, he says, I'm desperate, God, if you can help, please help, I need some help. God sees the heart, and he knows when someone's sincere with him, or they're not sincere. They're just doing it as a cheap way to impress other people, make others think that they're right with God when they might not know God at all. How many people does that describe, do you think? Multitudes, I would guess. Well, I'm going to stop right there. We're going to come back, and we'll start next time, Lord willing, and we'll take up the subject of the Urim and the Thummim and read the rest of the chapter. Those are interesting objects um, in the scriptures as well.